Let's try that again. Good morning, all. Good morning. Let me begin by saying how especially pleased I am and how honored I feel to be here this morning. As guests, as guests of the Covenant Vision Center uh, and the guests of Bishop Esby Beer. I'm saying this, of course, on behalf of members of the cabinet of Barbados, members of the executive and general council of the Democratic Labour Party, and friends and well-wishers of the Democratic Labour Party. We are all very pleased to be here this morning, and um, I have to say, based on what I've experienced so far, Truly, the Lord is in this place. Yeah. Let's say special thanks and certainly congratulations to the dancing team. Long will it linger in my personal memory. As you have been made aware by Bishop Derry, the occasion of our being here this morning is to celebrate the 61st anniversary of the Democratic Labour Party. 61 years ago, on the 27th of April, 1955. A group of forward-looking individuals, led by now national hero, the right excellent Errol Walton Barber, met and decided that history should be given a nudge, and they decided to form the Democratic Labour Party. 61 years later, of course, we are still here. 61 years later, we have given Barbados four of its seven prime ministers. <laughs> 61 years later, we have transformed Barbados from a village to a nation. <laughs> and we continue to be the party that is more committed to securing human welfare than promoting human warfare. <laughs> now over the last eight years now, we have formed the government of our days. We came into office on the 15th of January 2008, and we have been in office ever since then. Amen. It has not been an easy period because just before we came in, the Western world went into a global financial meltdown, and we have had to manage Barbados in very, very challenging circumstances. And we have done so, and dare I say, have done so very well. We have not always got the applause and the kudos of observers in Barbados. In fact, sometimes the opposite, in fact, very often the opposite has happened. Not from the majority of the people of Barbados, but from some of the louder elements in Barbados. And there's always a distinction between the majority and those who are loudest. Always keep that distinction in mind. But nothing daunted, we have forged ahead in the immortal words of St. Paul, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, and instant in prayer. And here I be this morning, 
in the Barbados of which we can all continue to feel very, very proud. Speaking for myself and for my cabinet and for the members of the Executive and General Council, we have not been unnerved by all the abuse and vilification to which we've been subject over the last eight years. I've always taken comfort in the words of our Lord in that famous Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5. And seeing the multitude, you end up into the mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. And then this. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted men the prophets which were before you. Here are the salt of the earth. And if the salt has lost its silver, where will shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Here are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father with you today. Amen. It would interest you to know that I had to learn that when I was at primary school. And I haven't forgotten. But that's what we've gone through. And I am very pleased to say that I have been able to rely on the loyalty, the support, and the commitment of a cabinet of which all Barbados can feel it proud. For the last few years, of course, um, the Minister of Finance and economic affairs have been the focus of much attention, not always positive attention, but he too steeled himself for all the challenges that lay before him, and he stuck to the task. He heard much about how negative the outlook was for Barbados. He heard much as we all have heard uh, about the downgrades of Barbados. Recently, that tune changed. And we heard that the outlook for Barbados is now positive. Yeah. I want to publicly congratulate and thank the Minister of Finance of Barbados. the sterling work he has done in that ministry and for the strength of character which he has shown in very difficult and very challenging circumstances. The measure of a man is not 
how he performs when things are going well. The true test of, of, of a man's character is how he performs in times of adversity. And uh, the Minister of Finance and all of the members of the cabinet on whom we have had to rely have shown the strength of character required of men and women who are deserving of the name men and women. So here we are today, 61 years after the formation of the Democratic Labour Party. No political party in any other part of the Caribbean, and this is not a boast, it's a fact, has done more to touch and to heal the lives of people in this region than the Democratic Labour Party. I like not to assume that people know all these things and to repeat them. I used to be a school teacher many years ago, and I understand the importance of repetition. You in this church understand the importance of repetition too, because we had to repeat much here this morning. <laughs> so I know that. But it is the Democratic Labour Party, if I may say a few things about our achievement. That in 1962 abolished the pay in secondary schools in Barbados and brought education within the reach of every single household in this land. <laughs> men and women for doing the same work were getting different pay, men getting better, higher wages than women. The Democratic Labour Party abolished that. We were all aware of how many families could not send children to school because they could not guarantee them lunch. This organization took the decision that every child had to have a meal every day and that the inability to have a meal should be no deterrent to going to school and therefore we introduced a school meal service which is still alive and well today. We took the country into independence. When other people were saying, no, you better not risk it. When some were saying, oh, it's going to be too expensive. Others were saying, oh, no, if you're going to try it, let's get a few people to go along with us so that if we slip, we have somebody to stop us from falling. Errol Walton Barrow and James Cameron Tudor and their allies said, no, we are doing this alone because we are Barbadians. And 50 years later, this country is one of the most respected developing countries in the entire world. If workers today can go to the National Insurance Department when they lost their jobs for unemployment benefits, understand that in 1967, the Democratic Labour Party passed the National Insurance and Social Security Act, from which we all benefit in the year 2016. And if workers, through no fault of their own, have to give up their jobs because of acts of God or because of natural disasters or whatever, the place of business, goes into bankruptcy or whatever. There is a piece of legislation called the Severance Payment Act. That piece of legislation had its genesis at a time when there was a major fire in Broad Street where a store got burned down. Poverty in those days. And workers who had done nothing wrong they didn't, they didn't cause the fire, but they had to go home without any compensation. And the Democratic Party said, no, that can't be that. And we passed a severance payment act 
That is no put every worker in Barbados in a position, in every worker in the private sector that is in a position where in the event of losing his or her job through no fault of his or her own, they can access seven skills. And thousands upon thousands of people have benefited from seven spade, from employees ever since that piece of from employees of Baker Park ever since that piece of legislation starts. If living in this country today can get maternity leave with pay, understand that that was not always so. It was the Democratic Labour Party that decided that you couldn't afford to discourage women who were in employment from becoming pregnant only because if they became pregnant and they had to take maternity leave, they couldn't get any pay. We passed maternity leave with pay legislation to ensure that the women in our society would not be disadvantaged by responding to the ancestral call, the biblical call, to increase and to multiply. <laughs> Maternity leave is paid to the Democratic Labour Party. If today, children born outside of wedlock are treated in the same way as children born in wedlock, understand that in 1975, the Democratic Labour Party passed the Succession Act to make it possible for children born in wedlock and those born outside of wedlock to be treated in the same way when uh, a parent died. And so far as our women are concerned, because of our slave history and because of how uh, these societies in the Caribbean have evolved, we have thousands of common law relationships in our, in our society. And in those common law relationships, it has always been the case, before 1975, that when the male in that relationship died, even though he and this woman may have been cohabiting for 25 years, she could not step forward and get anything. Because the law said that his heir at law should step forward. I know where off I speak. Because my own father died on the last of the last day of the should have come in 1960, and my mother was not married. But when he died, it was not my mother who had stepped forward, it was his brother who had to step forward and become the administrator of his estate and heir to all of this problem. The Democratic Labour Party said that can't be right. And put single women living with single women in a relationship of some permanence for five years or more in the same position as if those people were married. <laughs> that is what the party has celebrated in 61 years this week did for Barbados. And just in case you forget, if you went to school at Springer Memorial, understand the Democratic Labour Party built that in 1963. If you went to school at the Garrison Secondary School, understand the Democratic Labour Party built that in 1973, 74. If you went to school at LSD Secondary School, Understand the Democratic Party opened that in 1966 for independence. If you went to school at St. George Secondary School, understand the Democratic Labour Party did that. If you went to school at St. Lucy Secondary School, understand the Democratic Labour Party did that as well. If you went to school at Dayton Griffith Secondary School, understand the Democratic Labour Party did that as well. If you went to school at Lester Bond, understand the Democratic Labour Party did that as well. That is what the party of the celebrating 61 years this week has done for Barbados. So we have nothing of which we can be made to feel ashamed. 
we have a proud record and we've kept Barbados stable. That is why I embrace entirely the comments of Bishop Deer. We have a lot to be thankful for. And I identify fully with the words of that song right this morning who say, Come to your blessings and name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done for Barbados. Therefore, I'm very pleased to be here this morning uh, in this act of worship. As I said, I'm thoroughly enjoying uh, the worship service. And I'm very pleased at the very warm and tumultuous reception of which you have thought the Democratic Labour Party deserving this morning. The bread received us well. We are very pleased to be here. And you can count on the continued good stewardship, the commitment, and the loyalty of the Democratic Labour Party to the welfare of all Barbadians, but particularly to the welfare of those who are most vulnerable in this society. We've had a rough time, as I said, over the last few years. But as I had to tell you, the were in New York only two days ago. You only appreciate the value and the meaning, and you can only internalize the joy of Easter. Because there's something called Good Friday. If there was nothing called Good Friday, Easter would be an absurdity. And in every aspect of our lives, every single aspect, there's a Good Friday. No matter how anxious, and the ladies here this morning would know what I'm talking about, no matter how anxious a woman is, to hold over a cradle and smile in a baby's face. No matter how anxious she is, she's got to pass through something called labor. No matter how anxious any student at school is to boast about how many CXCs or K exams he has passed, the good Friday is that he has to forego, he or she has to forego all those simple pleasures that other friends are enjoying and burn the midnight oil in preparation for those exams. There is always a good Friday before Easter comes. And for countries, it's a good Friday too. And Barbados has had its own good Friday over the last few years, in common with many other countries. Some that thought they had escaped it are facing it now. We've walked that road, we know the challenges. But don't you ever forget that in your personal life, at every single level, if you are going to enjoy an Easter, you have to make peace and be prepared to pay the price of a good Friday. Without the Friday, Easter is a philosophical and theological answer. You need the Friday in order to appreciate Easter. And Barbados have understood that message from us, have worked with us, have walked with us. And I want to say thanks to them today for the sacrifices and the understanding and for the level-headedness they have shown in a very difficult period. But Easter is with us now. Easter is around the corner and we are all going to enjoy it together. So ladies and gentlemen, I am not here to preach a sermon. <laughs> They're coming one after me, the last of the book shows I have not worked it on this. <laughs> so I'm not going to test your patience any longer. You've been a very, very entertaining and very delightful audience. Thank you very much for having us. And we will continue to enjoy 
fellowship with you this morning. Thank you very much.